So I haven't really played with this build before, so let's just leave it at 50. It should be okay. Come on, let's use it. Come on, Greg. Come on. Come on. There it is. Oh. Earlier this year, I posted polls to the Warframe forums and Reddit and asked fellow players simply what were their top five picks for each weapon type, primaries, secondaries, and melee weapons. These didn't have to be the most efficient, most played, most damaging, or just their favorites. It was simply their top five for whatever they wanted to play with. My personal goal was to figure out what was being played with the least. Here's why. Warframe is a game most often played around the mid-tier of the game's difficulty. Depending on your progression, this means facing enemies that are somewhere between level 25 to 45, give or take 5 levels. But what this allows for those of us who feel that variety is the spice of Warframe's life is that we don't always have to play with the most efficient, badass, end-all-be-all weapons to enjoy our gameplay. My goal here in the 88th Armory is to show you some of those weapons you might have written off or haven't picked up in a long time, and to find builds for the mid-game that might possibly find their way into the end game. I'm Scott from Ramble Entertainment, and this is Season 1 of the 88th Armory. The weapon I want to talk about today is the new core, or as I titled it, the Meow Meow Microwave, as it does tons of damage in the background video. Now, this weapon has been talked about before, and let's go ahead and pull up the codex entry, and I added some additional information from the wiki. Now, the weapon has a 4 times crit multiplier, and as I mentioned, that's been talked about before, but what really helps the weapon out is the Adarza Kavat, because the weapon until now has been stuck at a 1% crit chance, and that was just too low for a consistent build. Consistency is important to me, and I'll even talk about a little further in this video how we get this build to be as consistent as possible with the Adarza. So, the Adarza's Cat's Eye is the mod from the Adarza Kavat, the new cat in the game, that allows this weapon to achieve consistency. Uh, and what it does is, for 10 seconds, it grants you and your team within a limited range, I believe it's 25 meters, a 60% critical chance. And it does that on a 20 second cooldown, which means up to twice a minute you have the opportunity to do 60% critical. So this grants in this build, in the background, the ability to do 10.8 times crit. And I'll get to the mods in just a moment. So the build I'm using is Radiation and Toxin. So it does Radiation against the Alloy Armor and then Toxin against the other armor. I should have looked it up before I recorded this. But basically, Grenier have two types of armor, uh, which is why you see radiation more effective against bombards and less effective against heavy gunners. So the toxin adds some damage to the heavy gunners. It has the increased fire rate because of the additional multi-shot and a decent status for one of the status mods. But really, what is, what's granting the weapon the opportunity to do excessive amounts of damage is the Adarza. Typically, on a truly consistent build, it would do 2,000 to 
1,000 to 2,000 damage on max mods, but it goes into the tens of thousands. So let's go ahead and take a look at those builds. So here we see the mods I was using on the new court from the prior footage. And I do want to say that I was actually using radiation and cold in the prior footage. I said I was using radiation and toxin. My bad. You definitely want to, in my opinion, spread out the damage, use uh, toxic or corrosive or uh, viral to fight some of the ferrite armor of some of the different kinds of Grenier. I was focused on fighting alloy armor, but there are there's both alloy and ferrite, so I was using radiation to fight the alloy, and I definitely, in my continued gameplay switched to toxic. Uh, deep fr uh, Cold damage does do an additional 25% damage to alloy. Moving on from that, I was using hollow point and time timed? Timed target cracker. Primed target cracker to achieve that 10.8 times critical multiplier. And you will notice in this build that I'm not using any crit chance, crit percentage multipliers, no additional crit mods. Uh, I used any additional mod space to make sure that I am achieving damage, and the Adarza grants us that window, that percentage of crit chance that is missing, that is so hard to achieve through just the mods that we can put on the new core itself. Additionally, the new core is a surprisingly malleable weapon. Room for one instead of two crit multiplier mods, and additionally, plenty of room for damage mods. You can go corrosive and radiation, you can go radiation and viral. If you want, you can go radiation, corrosive, and cold, or toxic, or heat. There is a lot of room in this weapon to function. Also, there's definitely mod space for your ammo. If you want to go with Trick Mag, or if you want to go with Prime Pistol Ammo Mutation, or even just regular Pistol Ammo Mutation, the weapon has a lot of room to function. Originally, I was going to say that the new core with the 10.8 Crit Multiplier even in conjunction with the Adarza, was not a consistent weapon choice. Now, I, I'm someone who loves consistency. I, I would take the new core out with just pure damage and just do uh, happily, you know, do my one to 2,000 uh, damage per tick from the weapon. Plain damage, white, no yellow, no red. I'd be happy with that. Sometimes I'd see that 1% crit pop up. But the difference is that there is a way to make the Adarza 10.8 Crit Multiplier a consistent build. The way in which we make the 10.8 Crit Multiplier Darza build more consistent is simply Speed Holster. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, but how do I give up my Energy Siphon? How do we give up Corrosive Projection? And Corrosive Projection, that's a tough one to answer. You could go in with three friends with Corrosive Projection on. I do not go into my solo matches simply using Corrosive Projection. I find that there's more benefit from Energy Siphon or Pistol Amp or Rifle Amp, Steel Charge, etc, etc, etc. So I am comfortable using Speed Holster with this build, uh, especially in conjunction with the Zeneric Focus School. Now, for those of you who do not know what that is or haven't unlocked fo Focus yet, you probably want to stop watching. I'm now going to talk about Focus for, like, a second. So, yeah, I use my Zeneric Focus School to make up for my lack of Energy Siphon, which I would typically use, and I don't really have a way to make up for Corrosive Projection. I'm comfortable with that because I do a lot of soloing lately, and I'm fine with that. So it's really a personal choice, but I do find that Speed Holster does make the build more consistent. Being able to pull out the new core whenever I see that window of opportunity, shaving off that one to one point some amount of seconds 
so that I can have the weapon out faster to utilize that window to do more damage. So in one of the last few bits of footage here, what we want to look at is a standard new core build in play. Let's go ahead and pull that up alongside a speed holster to allow us that opportunity to swap fast, to use the new core to our advantage, doing tons of normal damage, white damage, 1,000 to 2,000 per tick on enemies that we're attacking, utilizing radiation and viral and a higher status chance, but still using the Adarza to take advantage of that four times crit multiplier. It just allows us to do more consistent, again, normal damage. Uh, I'm gonna call it that because it's not yellow or red. But within that window with which Cat's Eye allows us to achieve that high yellow damage between like six and 10,000 yellow crit, basically. And really what I want to emphasize here is just the ability to swap weapons super fast and that the Meow Meow Microwave is real. Uh, the Adarza, I feel like, should not be overlooked. I was happy to return to the new core as a weapon, and I was really happy to find this unison between the weapon and the Adarza Kavat, which I do think was easily overlooked with the Smita. The Smita offers a lot of opportunities. And speaking of the Smita, let's go ahead and talk about the Smita in conjunction with the new core. The Smita affords us constant crit. However, what it doesn't afford us is consistent crit. It, within about the span of 10 minutes of recording, I was able to achieve red crit three times. Now, of course, that's RNG based. However, it's just not consistent. You can get constant crit, which is awesome, and it looks sick. And the new core is gonna be a great combination weapon with the Smita when you want to take the Smita out. However, it's just not the combination I would go for. So that is the new core Adarza combination, or as I hopefully coined the term, Meow Meow Microwave. As I said in the intro to the video, I strive for those mid-game weapons and builds to give us variety, but as you can see here under the right control circumstances, some of those weapons can find their way to end-game level enemies. I hope maybe this video made you reconsider the new core, possibly taking it off its dusty shelf or remaking it. Next week we'll have another weapon for you out of the 88th Armory. I've been Scott of Ramble Entertainment. I hope you enjoyed.